I've told Brittany and Kinsley and all them that, you know what, I, I've already deemed myself like an honorary pastor here. Amen? Amen. Honorary staff member. But I told them they have to remember me at Christmas. Uh, so when they have the Christmas party and pass out the Christmas bonuses, I will leave them with my address. But I love being at this church. When Pastor Brad calls me uh, and says, hey, can you? And a lot of times it's a, la it's a last moment deal. And I would literally call and cancel something else to be here. I would call and tell some other buddy, some church, I had a toothache. I would, I, I would make, it sounds so bad, but I would make something up. How many know I love being here this much? I think you guys are the greatest. Let's give this church, hey, your pastors, your pastors, I love Pastor Brad and his wife. Uh, what an incredible, incredible work they have. And so we're praying between services, before service, I pray for him as he's over in Guyman. Uh, what a man of God. Uh, I, I preach in a lot of churches a lot of locker rooms. And let me tell you, your pastor is one of the best, amen? And uh, your worship team is one of the very best too. And it kind of scared me when they brought that up. I didn't really know what that was until just a little while ago. Someone's watching over my shoulder uh, here this morning, but uh, I'm so excited to be here. I'm gonna ask them to put something up. Last time I was here, I wanted to just share this really quick because a lot of you gave to help me to fill backpacks for some children in Uvalde's Texas. And our goal uh, for doing that was 50. And you guys, look, look at right there, it says 78. We gave out 78 backpacks in Uvalde's Texas to the kids that went to Robb Elementary. And you guys gave half of that. So give yourselves a big hand. All of them, all of them had a Bible in it. And uh, we saw over, right over 312 people in Uvalde's come to Christ. I actually got to lead an entire family to the Lord in their house, uh, and they had lost their child in the Rob Elementary School shooting. So I just want to say thank you, and I'm always in the back. One of the big things that I do, I, 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 didn't, I don't write a book, I don't take out special offerings or anything, but I buy Bibles. And for every $5, I'm able to hand an athlete or somebody a Bible. So if you'd like to help with maybe buy, hey, sponsor one Bible. Sponsor a case for $100, I'm able to buy a case. And as you can see, we gave out like almost 1,400 Bibles uh, to athletes uh, around the United States. Amen? So praise God. Uh, I'll be in the back and talk to you about that. But uh, let's get in and dive into what the Lord is doing. I love the, the title of this series that you guys are in, uh, Battle Ready. When Pastor uh, texted me and said, uh, this is our series, uh, pray for a word. How many know it didn't take me very long? I, I, when you have a title like Battle Ready, I'm all ready to go. Amen? I'm already there, and it wasn't much. I prayed and said, God, give me a word. But this is right up my alley. And when, I was, when, when Brittany left, it says, kind of like a coach. And I do a lot of half-time half talks. Amen? And so when I go in there at halftime, if they're down, it's a little harder. If they're up, it's easier. But the coach will have me do a half-time talk. But you know what I never talk about? I never talk about the first half. It's done. How many know what I'm talking about? It's over. It's, I, I'm not going to spend the 10 minutes I have talking about what happened in the first two quarters. What I want to do is take that time, that 10 minutes, and focus on the next two quarters. Amen? And how many know we don't need to focus on what happened yesterday? How many know we're looking forward to be battle ready? Amen? How many know that we're in the army and it's called the army of God? Praise God. And so this sermon really got me excited. And, and when I think about it, uh, a lot of times I have to ask myself the own que my own question, am I battle ready? And sometimes I'm not. The Lord gave me a word. Does anybody else do this? I pray for a word every year. Does anybody else do that? Kind of a year, a word. Yeah. Well, he's always given me words like, like miracles. How many know that's a good word? You know, different words. Last year was, you know, this year he gave it. Normally he gives it to me in December. Before God in heaven, he gave it to me in October. You know what it was? It was the word discipline. And I'm like, Lord, that's not, what are you talking about? And then I remembered a couple of days earlier when I was laying on the couch watching a football game with a bag of Oreos on my chest <laughs> and a cup of milk right here. And I was, I ate the whole bag, but about 30 years ago, I had a tattoo put, I know some of you might not agree, I had a tattoo put on my ankle. You know what, the, you know what it says? Discipline. And 
I was sitting there dipping Oreos, looking at that tattoo going, yeah, that didn't work. <laughs> and so the Lord, gave, I'm not joking, the Lord gave me the word discipline in my life. And this would be the year that I would have more discipline. Well, you know what? I've already messed up a couple times. But how many know I didn't give up, amen? And whatever happened in 22, how many know God's gonna do something greater? We're not worried about the second half. We're pushing on. And I believe God has a word for us. I had some shirts I used to sell when I would do men's meetings and things, and it said this on the back. The enemy whispered, uh, you can't withstand the storm. And the warrior whispered back, I am the storm. Yeah. How many want that kind of that mentality, amen? Or I know we're in Oklahoma and we probably have some people here. You're not gonna confess to it, but you probably watch Yellowstone. So let me put it in an easier thing. When Beth said, I, you are the trailer park and I am the tornado. If that helps you a little bit more, then that's okay. But when the enemy whispers, you can't handle the storm, how many know we got to be ready and looking back and say, you know what, dude, I am the storm. Amen. And you don't want to mess with me. Every morning when I get up, I pray this morning, Lord, let my thoughts be your thought. Let my eyes be your eyes. You know why? Because I know every day I'm walking into a battlefield. Every morning when you get up, you're walking into a battlefield. When you go to work, that's why I think when Kinsley was talking about surrender, it took me back to thinking that our greatest, and I just, the Lord places in my heart, your greatest surrender will always be bigger than your best performance. Amen? Let me say it again. Your greatest surrender will always be better than your best performance in life. And I thought about it. This is just totally off the wall. But I thought about Martha and Mary. Martha was all distracted, wasn't she? Martha was distracted. I could imagine her just complaining. Look at Mary. What is she doing? And, and I got to think, I'm going to preach this. Martha was distracted, but Mary had discovered. Martha was distracted, but the Bible says Mary discovered. She was already surrendered at the feet of Jesus. And you know what? When you were saying that, Kinsley, it spoke to my heart. Why do we get so distracted? We get distracted and we don't become battle ready. Amen? We get off our game. I, I know when I get off my game, it's normally because of some type of of distraction. Amen. So this morning you may be feeling uh, fixed up. How many feel like you're fixed up? Anybody? How many feel like you're mixed up? Raise your hand. How many could just say you're about 50-50? Uh, How many? Are, I'm a little messed up, a little fixed up. Amen. But you know one thing we're not going to do? I, that's my life. I live my life at that 50. You know, sometimes I wake up, I, really, I feel like I'm fixed up. Other times I feel like I'm really messed up. Which one thing I don't do is I don't give up. Amen. And we could be fixed up here this morning. We could be messed up here this morning, but we ain't given up here this morning. Amen. There was a lady by the name of Florence Chadwick, and she was one of the great open water swimmers. And this is for some of you that feel like giving up, that maybe came in this morning and, and your giants are big. But this lady, Florence, in the early, I believe it was the early 1900s, swam from the West Coast, the beach, out to Catalina Island. It's 26 miles. And they didn't know. So they woke up early in the morning. She began to swim. And they had boats that went along each side of her. And she would swim for a while. And about hour one, she would stop and say, I'm, I'm exhausted. I don't. And the people in the boat would go, go, you can do it, you can do it. And then she'd start swimming more. Another hour. And then, they, and then she'd come, I don't know if I can get it. I want to get in the boat. Well, the signal was for her to raise her hand if it was for surely over. She started swimming and fog had set in. And with every stroke, she couldn't see. And so finally, she just stops and waves her hand and they pull her in the boat. And when they pull her in the boat, they take off and break through the fog. And the other side, Catalina Island, was a half a mile away. She had given up too soon. And how many know a lot of times in our life, it's the fog. It's the giants that come along, we're going great, and then all of a sudden, the fog sets in. And what it does is it causes us to want to give up a lot of times and want to quit. So here's what the Lord spoke to me when I was preparing this message, that whatever happened to you in 2022, whatever knocked you down, anybody ever been knocked down? Come on, I've been there. And whatever happened to you, whatever fatigue, whatever hurt, whatever pain that you went through in 2022, because of this series, because of what pastor preached last week, what I'm preaching today, what pastor's gonna preach next week, you're gonna bounce back in 23, amen? 
But you know what? Here's what the Lord spoke to me. Here. What will determine how you bounce back is what's on the inside. You know, this basketball right here, this is, you know, you know what makes this ball? This is a cool ball. It's made of kind of a synthetic, maybe rubber. I don't know what it's made of, but it's a basketball. It's got black lines around it. But it's the outside that we grab. But it's not what makes this thing bounce. What makes it bounce? What's on the inside. Am I right? It's what's on the inside. And let me tell you this. What's on the inside of this will determine how far you bounce back. So are you filled up? Or are you messed up? Are you mixed up? Or are you filled up? The question starts with us. And each and every one of us here, we're going to face giants. But the Lord specifically told me that whatever hurt, pain, fatigue, giant that you had to face last year, you will bounce back if you're filled with the right mentality. Amen? And Kinsley and I were talking in the back. We go through things in our life. But what we go through, we grow through. Amen? We don't allow it to stop us. And so a lot of times in our life, we go through things, these hurts and pains, and then we allow them to stop us. But listen to me, when you're filled with the right stuff, you can make it through. There's not a giant that's too big. There's not a giant that is too huge that you cannot take out. Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to 1 Samuel. I want to take you to one of my favorite giant slayers in the Bible. I'm sure Pastor Brad was probably going to get to this at some point. 1 Samuel 17, verse 31. Let me read it to you. I've read this scripture so many times, I should, I should have it memorized. Some soldiers overheard David talking. So they told Saul what David had said. Saul sent for David, and David came. Your majesty, he said, this Philistine shouldn't turn us into cowards. I'll go out and I will fight him myself. You don't have a chance against him, Saul replied. Anybody been there before? People thought you were too small, you didn't have enough, you didn't know enough. And I love what he says here. He goes, and Saul replied, you are, you are only a boy and he's been a soldier all his life. But David told him, your majesty, I take care of my father's sheep. And when one of them is dragged off by a lion or bear, I go after it and beat the wild animal until it lets the sheep go. If the wild animal turns and attacks me, oh my gosh, I love this part. I grab it by its throat and kills it. I love that part. I know it's a little bit graphic, but come on. That's an incredible thing. He, didn't lie, he just grabbed it by the throat. And, and then it goes on. And, Sir, I have killed the lion and the bear that way. And I can kill this worthless Philistine. He, how many know David already had the mentality going? I mean, listen, let's go on. He says, I can kill this worthless Philistine. He said he shouldn't have made fun of the armies of the living God. The Lord has rescued me from the claw of the lion and the bear. And he will keep me safe from the hands of this Philistine. All right, Saul answered. Go ahead and fight him. And I love this part. And I hope the Lord will help you. How, why is that in the Bible? That is not encouraging as a motivational speaker. I wanted to just take that out. Saul looks at how, how Pastor Brad would not have me back as at the end I said, praise God, I hope you can become a great job. I, I hope it works. That's what Saul was saying. Go fight and I, and I hope you're doing well, but I'm not sure. You're probably going to get killed. Not a lot of encouragement. Saul had his own military clothes and put armor on David. We know that part. David said, hey, this is not going to fit. He had the helmet. We looked at all this stuff that he fought with. And then it goes on and he says, he went out into a stream and he picked up five smooth rocks and put them in a leather bag, then in his sling in his hand, and he wait, went straight toward Goliath. Now let's skip down to verse 53. When the Israelite army returned from chasing the Philistines, they took what they wanted from the enemy camp. David took Goliath, or David took Goliath's head to Jerusalem, but he kept Goliath's weapon, or some of your translations will say sword. And he put it in his tent. I've read this so many times, and I didn't get why he took the spear and put it in his tent. 
You know why he kept a momentum? Here's what I believe. Here's what's going to help you make a great, make you a great giant killer is this, is your, it's your mentality. It's what's up here. Anybody ever wonder why the lion's the king of the jungle? Anybody ever wonder that? He's not the biggest. The elephant's the biggest. He's not the tallest. The giraffe's the tallest. He's definitely not the fastest. The cheetah's the fastest. Why did the lion get the title or the title king of the jungle? Mentality. When an elephant walks up to a lion, it thinks run. When a lion walks up to an elephant, it thinks dinner. How many know there's a big difference? It's mentality. And I look at David and I think about what gave David? Why was this little shepherd boy? Everybody else was ready to run. Nobody wanted to do it. Nobody wanted to take care. They even talked about what they would get. The king's daughter not have to pay taxes. That wasn't enough. They, the giant was too big. But this little shepherd boy had the faith to go out and take on Goliath. Here's what I believe. And I, this is what I saw the other day. I've never thought about this before. You know why he put the sword in his tent? He put it in there with a paw and a tail. How many know David already knew that he had killed the bear and he had taken the lion? And it's just my opinion that he took and cut off a paw and a tail and hung it somewhere. If he kept the sword, he kept the paw and the tail. And how many know we all have a paw and a tail somewhere? And I was thinking this morning, a paw plus a tail equals a head. And a lot of us need to slay the giant and take his head, but we wonder if we can do it. Here's where you get the strength. You remember back to where your bear was. You remember back to when that lion rose his head. So you remember back, you go back, everybody has a paw and a tail somewhere. Do you remember where yours is? I do. I, when I go through things, a lot of times I go back and say, wow, the Lord really did that. The Lord really, in some of my deepest, darkest hurts, the giants are coming up from everywhere. I go back and I go, God, you delivered me once, you're gonna deliver me again, amen? amen? You see, David knew that. Before he went through the town raising the head, he goes, I mean, here, let me just wipe this sword off a little bit. I'm gonna throw it in my tent and I'm gonna put it in there with the bear claw and the tail because those were his other victories. Let me tell you, whatever victory and whatever giant that you're facing today, you can face it with the faith that David had because what God has done before. If he did it then, he can do it again. Let me go on. Let me, let me, let me give you these this morning. I want to give you some truths about being a giant fighter this morning. How many know we all have giants in our life? Kind of like that game, whack-a-mole. How many have ever played that game? My grandson loves playing that game. How many of you never win that game? Like, you can't hit them enough. I wanted to jump up on top, and my wife said, they'll kick you out of Dave and Buster's if you do that. How many know? I wanted to get up and just start stomping hits. But they keep popping. Sometimes, anybody live life like that? I've been there. You're just like taking the mallet. One pops up, one pops up, one pops up. That's the way we live our lives sometimes. So let me give you a couple things that will help you in fighting giants in your life. I believe when you leave this service today, you're going to leave with the mentality of a giant slayer. Number one, giants appear when you least expect them. I love it. When David was asked to go check on his brothers, he had no idea that he was heading into a battle. He thought he was just going to check on his brothers, but he has headed into a battle. Hey, giants don't give you a warning. How many know giants pop up when they want to pop up a lot of times? Sometimes it's a phone call. Sometimes it's sitting in a doctor's office. Sometimes it's a knock on the door. And then all of a sudden, you're faced with this big giant. What do you do? Because you know what? Sometimes we're not prepared. And I've been there when I wasn't prepared. And that's why I love what pastor has said for the first of the year, that we're getting battle ready, that we're not going to be caught off guard because we know that they come at the least expected times, a lot of times in our lives. Most of us have to know that we have to be ready. I train and work with a lot of athletes on the U of A campus. And the one thing I noticed about the sports in college is they're never done. I, remember in high school, you're done. You went on and played something else. They're, baseball players are playing baseball all year long. Football players, they, don't, they get like a couple of weeks off between seasons. They're back in the weight room. It never stops. And I asked one of the big linemen the other day, I said, what, what do you guys, what? He, goes, he goes, we can't not be ready. We can't slack off and then come back and try to be good. We have to be good all the time. 
Why does a baseball player that got drafted by the Brewers this year, this guy was in every one of our chapels, Robert Moore, Bob Moore, went with the Boston Brewers. You know what? Every summer he went to a hitting camp. He's not real tall, but he's smacking home runs already in the home run, in the, in the uh, pros. You know why? Because he stayed ready all year long. He never stopped practicing. And as Christians, we got to understand, we got to be ready. I love that we have to have the helmet of salvation. I love your pastors going through it all. But let me tell you, if we're not ready, we're going to get taken out. Amen. As Christians, why do we go to church? Because I want to be ready. Uh, I told the first service that a lot of times uh, I'll be at church and there'll be a special speaker and he'll come out uh, right when it's time for him. He'll hang out, hang out in the back. I'm not against that. Trust me. Uh, I, if, if, if they want to do that, that's fine. I've never done it one time in my life. And I'm not bragging on myself, but I know I got to get ready. And you know what gets me ready? Worship gets me ready. How many know we, we war according to worship a lot of times? And sometimes when I go to speak, man, I'm ready to go, but I got to have that worship time. And so I come out and I sit down and I enter into worship because it helps me get ready, battle ready. Amen. So we got to stay ready. Let me give you number two real quick. Number two, you can face giants with fear or faith. How many know David knew that fear was not an option? Fear would have ended in his death. It was faith. It wasn't just the stones that killed that giant. It was David's faith. Amen? Amen. It was his faith when he was picking out those five rocks and grabbed that sling. It was his faith when he killed the bear and the lion. This guy was prepared. He was already talking to Saul. Who is this guy? Why is he talking bad about us? Let me take him out. You're too small. I don't care. Let me have him. How many know that's battle mentality right there? Amen? That's not fear. I look at it right here as we look. You can look in um, 1 Samuel. Let's go 17 again, verse 24. It says this. When the Israelite soldiers saw Goliath, they were scattered and ran off. They said to each other, look how he keeps coming out to insult us. Sounds like a playground fight. Uh, The king is offering a big reward to the man who kills Goliath. That man will even get to marry the king's daughter. What are they talking about right there? Poor king's daughter. And they said, he won't have to pay taxes anymore. He'll get to not have to pay taxes. David asked some soldiers standing nearby, what will a man get for killing this Philistine and stopping him from insulting your people? Who does this worthless Philistine think he is? He's making fun of the armies of the living God. Man, when I read that, David already had that mentality. How many know, listen, David didn't, have fear, he had faith. But you know what? I think a lot of people say the, the opposite of fear sometimes is, is faith. And I, I know I put faith and fear together, but really the opposite of faith is certainty. How many know a lot of times that if we're certain, we don't have to rely on faith. But you know what? When we rely on God, when even Saul said, hey, I hope it goes good for you, that didn't, that didn't, that didn't mess David up because he had already had the faith. Amen. Why? Because he had a paw hanging in his tent. He had a lion's tail hanging in his tent. And he remembered grabbing the throat of the bear and ripping it out. And so this giant didn't look as big to him as it did to everybody else. But we got to know in our lives, listen to this very close, that we either are going to face him with fear or we can face him with faith. It's up to us what we want to do. Let me go on. Number three. Someone will always be ready to discourage you from facing your giants. How many ever had someone like that? Said, you're not enough, you don't know enough, you don't have enough. You'll never get out of debt. You'll never, your finances are always going to be jacked up. How many have ever, I, I don't know about you, but I've had people like that. And I don't allow, one of the things I've learned in my maturity as a Christian is I don't allow negativity around anymore, Amen. I, there, there's very few people I allow speak into my life. I've been doing this a long time. Back when I was early day of the power team, like the first year, I was like 20 years old, single. And I remember we'd be at a church and some lady would come up and go, I got a word for you. I said, oh, okay, what? She goes, you're supposed to marry my daughter. I said, show me a picture. I said, you're a false prophet. No. But I constantly, I would constantly get words like that and it would throw me off. 
You're going to go to Africa. I'm like, oh my God, no, I want to stay on the power time. I don't want to go to Africa right now. And so we get people, I'm not, I'm not against words. Don't get me wrong. I love them. But don't allow every person to speak something into your life. Amen. I have, I can count on one hand how many people I would let speak into my life. And your pastor is one of them. If he called me and said, John, the Lord told me this for you, I would take it to heart. But there's only about five that I allow speak into my lives. Because sometimes not everybody's for your dream like you are. Not everybody wants to slay the giant in your life like you do. And a lot of times in our life, you know what? They'll tell us that we're not enough, that we don't know enough. When I got saved, I joined the choir. Uh, the first week when I got saved, I got baptized at First Baptist Church in Hermiston, Oregon. And then I wanted to join the choir. And after two weeks, they quit telling me when they were meeting. <laughs> How many know your gifting and talent is not music when the choir runs from you? So, but you know what I could do? I could lift weights. And then I told my pastor, I said, one day I'm going to lift weights for Jesus. And he goes, ha, ha, ha. no, just go to Bible college, John. You'll never be able to do that. For the last 41 years, God's used weights, ministries, and athletes in my ministry. You know what? I could have listened to him. I could have went on and went to Bible. I, I did go to Bible college. After that, I fly out on the weekends. The power team sent me to Bible college. I could have done what a lot of people told me to do, just be a pastor. And you know what? I love pastors, but you would not want me as your pastor. I'm just being honest. I'm an, I, I am an evangelist. People say, what's that? It's literally one of the lost of the five-fold ministry. Literally, one of, the, one of the lost. People don't talk about it anymore. We don't want to offend anybody. I go places, man, don't, don't have them raise their hand. We don't want to offend them. How many know without conviction and repentance, there's no salvation? Amen. I've been at churches where a pastor gave me a list of words not to say. And he's, all these different words, he goes, please don't use born again. It just freaks people out. And then I looked down and I saw the word blood, the blood. And I said, you know what? I'll give you this one, this one, this one, but I ain't giving you this one. Because it's only through the blood of Jesus Christ that we're saved. And I didn't know if I was going to preach that morning or not, but he let me. And I think I said blood like 20 times. <laughs> I never got asked back. But you know what? Listen, hey, I know what I was called to do. And it wasn't to pastor. I tried it one time to work, go on staff at a church years ago and it tried to work. You know what they did? They sent me to the hospital to visit someone that was sick. And I, I was, I'm a prayer warrior. I'll, I'll go to the hospital and pray for you. You know what I did? He was pretty sick. And I, I was talking to him and I sat on the side of his bed. I sat on the oxygen cord and it kinked it. I'm not joking. It kinked it. And all of a sudden I'm talking to him and he's going, <gasps> I said, Bill, you all right? <gasps> and it's all of a sudden the thing goes, dee, 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 dee. And the nurses come running in. I'm jumped off the bed and all of a sudden Bill starts breathing better. And the lady goes, you were on his oxygen cord. I'm like, oh my God, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> Get me back to a football field, please. Put me in a locker room somewhere. But I knew what I was called to do. You know what God's called you to do. You know what giants you're facing here today. Don't let somebody tell you it's too big. Don't let somebody come along and tell you that you can't do it. How many know through faith you can do it? Amen? Let's go on. Let's go on. Let me give you number four. Number four, if you are facing a giant, run into the battle, not away, and take his head. I love 1 Samuel. I'm going to close in just a second. 1 Samuel 17, 48. It says this. It says, as the Philistines move closer to attack him, David ran quickly into the battle. How many love that? David didn't waltz. He didn't hang out. He didn't watch Netflix before he went. The Bible says David ran into the battle. You know when the best time to fight your giant is right now? Don't allow time. Don't allow people. Don't allow fear. I love that it says that he ran. He says, reaching into his bag and taking out a stone, he slung it and struck the Philistine on the forehead. And the stone sunk into the forehead and fell, and he fell face down to the ground. And listen to this after that happened. David ran and stood over him. Hey, it wasn't just enough for David to knock him down. David then ran to him. He ran into battle, and then he ran toward Goliath and took off the sword of Goliath and chopped his head off. How many know that's going to some extent right there? You know what some of you have done? You've slung the swing shot, but that's all you've done. 
you haven't released the stone and you haven't taken its head. You see, a claw or a paw and a tail always equals a head. And David swiped and he took that head and he went and put that sword in his tent. And I love what it says here as we look at it. It says, David ran and stood over him. He took a hold of the Philistine sword and he drew it from the sheath. After he had killed him, he cut off the head with the Goliath sword. When the, when the Philistines saw that their hero was dead, they turned and ran. How many know when you run into, they run away? Let me say it again. When you run into, they will run away. You know what? It was faith that caused them to run in. David didn't waste time. I, I, come, come on, Holly, somebody make a movie. Somebody throw up a rated R movie that just shows the guts and blood of, of this story. Man, walking over, taking the sword. I'll go to that movie. Hey, I love Fireproof, but that's, I'm done with Fireproof. I mean, watch that movie. I love that movie. Hey, Facing the Giant. All those movies are good. Movies. I'm ready for some action. I'm ready to see David run in. Who would play that part, man? And they grab the sword. I'd be, in the, I'd be in the theater. Yes! You know what? Listen. Who would play that part? You. You. You could play that part. You know what? It only takes faith. It only takes your faith and the mentality to stand and say, devil, you have no place in my life. I want to close with this. The other day, I was in a hotel, and most of the time I watch ESPN, but the Disney Channel was on there, so I watched it. And the story of the Lion King. How many have ever seen the Lion King? That's, I mean, I, I'm not a big Disney fan, but th that movie was pretty cool. And my girls are older, but that's one I watched with them. So I, I, I caught like 20 minutes into it. But I saw the part where Simba was faced with the hyenas. Remember, remember, remember little Simba? He was so cute. He's like, rawr, rawr. he got this little roar. And the hyenas were coming up and they were mad and they were, and they were laughing at him. And this little Simba, he's sitting there and he, and he rawr, rawr. And the hyenas are laughing. And then David, another time, rawr. And the hyenas just laughed. So little Simba, I watched it. He decides to take one more roar. And he puffs out his chest and roar. And the hills shook and the rocks fell. John copped a version of the story. And you know what? It wasn't Simba's roar. His father had come up behind him and roared for him. How many know this morning that the roar of the Father is behind you here today? We don't have to fight the giant alone. Pastor's not asking you to be battle ready and go by yourself. Man, you've got a church, you've got groups starting tonight. Let me tell you, you won't be battle ready unless you get into one of those groups. I'm not getting paid any extra for that. You know what, listen, you, don't, you can't show up once or twice on Sunday and be battle ready, it doesn't work. You gotta have a group of people. You gotta have, you gotta have some people around you. That's why people say, ah, oh, that church, you know what, you didn't get involved. And if you wanna be battle ready, if I had a number five on there, you know it'd be to say, get, get plugged in. If you wanna be a giant slayer, you better have some other giant slayers around you. Because the roar of the Father is behind you, but you don't want to go to battle alone. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes? I want to pray for you this morning. Some of you are facing battles right now. Some of you have giants in your life. When I preach this message, I think of myself. I still go through battles. I still feel like I only roar like Simba roars. But you know what I'm reminded of? The roar of the Father that's behind me. Everything I said today, you don't have to do alone. You can do it through the power and the blood of Jesus Christ because he is within you. You are more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. And as pastor goes through this series, when you come in next week, come in prayed up. Come in fired up next week. 
Get up an extra 20 minutes and pray over the service. Pray over what God's gonna do. Because you know what I know about this church? They don't just throw up a, a, a sermon series to throw it up. There's a reason why. There's a reason why the Lord spoke to my heart that you'll bounce back, but it's the, what is inside of you that's gonna cause you how far you're gonna bounce back. What are you filled with? What mentality do you have in order to get back? Do you have the roar of the Father behind you? Absolutely. But do you have the mentality? You already got the paw, you already got the tail. Now it's time to take the head. With every head bowed, every eye closed, if you're here and you say, John, I'm facing some giants, I want you to just lift up your hand. One, two, three, lift them up. There's some giants in my life, just lift, lift them up high. Anybody else, hands up all over. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to take your first step of faith, not in fear, but I want you just to step up out of your chair and come down and stand. You say, why do you do this? Just simply because I want to pray with you. I want, I want to believe God. I want to stand in the gap with you. If you raise your hand, don't stay in that seat. You're saying, I want to slay my giant. I'm taking the head today. I, I know I'm being graphic, but some of you are still walking around with the rocks and slinging the sling and God's saying, it's time to throw it. It's time to get the sword and then cut its head off. Because you know what? If you don't do it now, it'll destroy your marriage. If you don't do it now, your finances are never going to bounce back. If you don't do it now, the child that you've been praying for, you may have to go pick up at the hospital, police station. And it's better to kick that giant out now than to go pick him up later. Father, I pray over each and every one of these people here this morning. Father, I thank you that we're real here. Lord, I could jump down right now and stand with them. Because I know there's times in my life where fear enters the story. And I just pray over each and every one of these today that you would give them the mentality, Lord God, to be battle ready, to become a giant slayer. Not only in the kingdom of God, but in their life, in their marriage, in their home, in their finances. Let them take that next step to taking out the enemy. Lord, I pray you would bring to remembrance every paw and every tail in their life. That they would know that if you did it then, that you will do it again. I believe that's what gave David his strength was the paw and the tail. I'm just firm believer. He, he, he went out, he, he already had the faith because he'd already taken the bear by the throat. He'd already killed a lion. He, he was ready to roll. You're ready to roll. Remember what God did five years ago. Remember what the Lord did two years ago. You've already got your tail and your paw. Now let's take a head. In Jesus' name I pray. And I thank you, devil, that you do not have these people's lives. We come against every giant that has caused hurt, pain, separation. And I pray in Jesus' name that you would help them take the head of the giant. Here today, in Jesus' name. And everybody said... Amen. Let's give Jesus a big hand clap this morning. Amen. I will be in the back if you would like to talk. Also, please stop by. Uh, if you need a Bible, I'll give you a Bible. If you'd like to help support, uh, buy some Bibles for every about $5. Uh, I'm able to buy one. You can get $5, you can get $50, you can get whatever you want to give, and it'll all go to help buy some Bibles. Amen. Thank you very much.